Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priest and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guest to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fatted cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm and another to his business. The rest laid hold of the servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their cities. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go therefore into the main roads, and invite it to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets, and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. We have today a reading about a feast, a banquet. We have to remember that someone who prepares a major banquet, and in this case a wedding, a, for, a feast for his son, when they prepare this and someone is ignoring it or has a simple and flimsy excuse for not coming, it was considered to be a very great affront at that time and in some ways today too because it takes a lot of effort to make a great feast. And people are also knowing that we become one people, one to get in togetherness when we actually eat together. And so feasting at a given time with those that you want to be part of the community becomes an extremely important aspect of a culture. And that applies to almost all primitive and advanced cultures alike. It, eating together is important. And so that's what this parable is about. That the king was trying as hard as he could to have his best friends come and they would enjoy this together. Watch what happens. They don't come. And so instead of that, in the parable, it opens itself up. And now, instead of being just open to those that were the special guests, it is now open to the people who were in general, out in the street, the general public, a different set of people. When we talk about food, we talk about, and that's in the month of October, we have actually World Food Day, and we've had examples of food days in the past, of which I took part in uh, back in 1973, the first food day that I know of. Um, we had Bishop Gumbleton there, with the Center of Science and the Public Interest, and we, and we actually uh, had a gathering and had a uh, an invitation to people to try to bring this together to organize, and the organization occurred on a, a really a, a as much of a national level as we could at that time, and has since gone into a world movement. But Food Day means that we focus on food because we have to have it to live. Tomorrow we have to have more food, the next day as well. And therefore, the banquet that the Lord prepared for us is the bounty of this earth. 
the bounty that has been prepared from the early times. And that bounty is not shared equally by all the people. There are probably up to a billion people will tonight go to bed hungry. And these people should have the basics of life. And the ba most basic, most essential is food itself. So the sharing of the banquet is of utter importance to us all. And that's why it is necessary for us to see that not just the dish that we have cooked here on the table could go to somebody in Africa or another part of the world that may have some uh, scarcity at this time, but rather uh, the materials from which it is made, uh, whether it is corn or wheat or uh, other oil or other products, these materials could be sent to those countries if needed be, or we could be spending more attention on making sure that the small farmers in those countries are able to produce enough and to distribute it among those who are in need. In fact, the problem of food distribution is far more important than what many of us are giving attention to even in this time of pandemic, for that is a longer range problem in many senses than what we're suffering from right now. But at the same time, we should really think in terms of being able to share our meals with others. The table was at that time of culture of Christ, when Christ lived. It was very important, not only its placement, that is the people who would come closer and closer to the host and would be able to be placed there, but also who came and where it was. And yet Jesus constantly throughout the scriptures gave attention to others who were not normally invited or who you would sit and eat a meal with. And therefore, the tax collector, he actually went to his house and invited himself, in fact, and had the meal with uh, this person. And if we remember that this happens several times where he invites in people or they come and wash his feet or something else uh, with their tears, and uh, Jesus is always receptive to others and to eating together. Togetherness in eating is what is so prime to this very parable. And therefore, if we look at it that way, and it's the bad and the good alike, but at least we will be saying in it that we need to have a spiritual banquet. And we do. That is what the Eucharist is about. Christ himself. We have the bread of life, and this bread of life is what we eat together with people, rich and poor, those of black, white, and all other colors. We eat this together because we do not want our meals to be separated in such a way and apart from each other, and therefore we be a segregated society. The whole of this is a banquet for all. It has been refused, we might say, in one way by those who were first invited, but their invitation was to help others to get invited. And so in that sense, it was the beginning. But now it is meant for all. And the sharing of food is something that is of prime importance on a food day or any other time of the year. We are to be people who should, and are Let's remember that the fathers of the church in the early days wrote, if we tried to go to communion and there was a hungry people outside, it would be unworthy for us to do so without first feeding the people. We do in our parishes try to get, make sure that the people who are poor get some surplus of food. And others find this and try to do it as best we can. It is something that we should be mindful of at all times. When we eat from the banquet, whether it's physical food or the spiritual food of life, we must understand that we are eating this with all the people of the world. That banquet was prepared by God in the bounty of our creation. And then we come to our final point. We should never waste food. Now I say this because wasting food occurs quite often among young and old. Infant maybe can throw his the food around all over the place, but not when they began to have a sense of responsibility. 
And yet in our culture, it is actually necessary for some people to leave an amount of food there on their plate to show they were satisfied and they had enough. I never could do that. It was never part of my life. I always felt that the food took a lot of effort to get to me and that we use it all. And I think that it's important that in a general way, when we used to do analysis, we found that in colleges, several colleges that we looked at uh, for environmental resource assessments, that food waste was one of the big problems they had in order to become a greener society. Let us not waste the food that we have. We have to eat it, and if we don't eat it, at least save the basic materials and send it to others who really need it. So food is important. It's important to make us a spiritual people, to be one with others. Let's make sure the oneness is always improved. Spoken like the first bird